Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 13 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. We were solving the in-text questions of this chapter and we had reached question 10.4 in the previous video and I told you that we would do question 10.5 and 10.6 before I proceed to the chemical properties or the chemical reactions of Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. So let us first solve question 10.5. What is the question? Draw the structures of the major monohalo products in each of the following reactions. The first question is that you have got cyclohexanol and thionyl chloride. You know when alcohols react with thionyl chloride, it results in the formation of the halogen derivative. The alcoholic group is substituted by the halogen. And which halogen would it be? It would be chlorine. So what would you get here? You would get the chlorine derivative plus sulfur dioxide plus HCF. These would be the products of this reaction. For the next reaction, you have benzene, nitrobenzene, and you have an ethyl group attached to it at the para position. It reacts with bromine, Br2, and in the presence of heat and ultraviolet light. Now this is your hint here. Bromination is occurring in the presence of heat or ultraviolet light. When does the bromination in the presence of heat and ultraviolet light take place of a hydrocarbon? When, what had you studied about the free radical mechanism? So here it would be bromination by free radical mechanism. And we also know that this is not possible in the case of benzene products. So it is the alkyl part which would participate in this reaction. Right? So, bromination would take place in the alkyl part and not in the benzene part. So, what would you get here? The product that you would get here is the major product. You would have benzene, the NO2 remains as it is, and here instead of CH2, you get a Br here and CH3 plus you'll get HBr. Right? So this was the reaction with this was the reaction with bromine in the presence of heat and ultraviolet light. In the next question, you have um, benzene which has CH2OH, that is uh, methyl alcohol with a phenol. Again, see there's a benzene ring. There is an OH group here. The CH2OH. Now. There's an alcoholic group here and an alcoholic group here. React it with HCl and heat it. We know when alcohols are heated with a halogen acid, it results in the formation of the, uh, it results in the substitution of the OH group by the uh, halogen atom. Now, this question has been given to confuse you. How? There are two OH groups. One OH group is attached to the benzene ring while the other OH group is attached to the methyl group, that is methyl group here, which is attached to benzene. So it is in the branch. The substitution would take place of this OH group because this is a process that is again not used for aromatic alcohols. The reason being that for aromatic alcohols, the oxygen which is attached to the benzene ring, the OH which is attached to the benzene ring, this oxygen has a partial double bond character. Having a partial double bond character, it is not, it is, it has a stronger bond with the benzene ring and therefore it's not easy to lose it. So since losing it would not be as easy as losing this OH group, naturally, energetically, the loss of this OH group or the substitution of this OH group is feasible and that is the group that will be uh, substituted and therefore the halo compound that you would get would be substituting this OH here. So what will you get? you would get phenol, that is the benzene here remains as such, and here you get CH2Cl plus H2O, right? The hydrogen from here and the OH would form H2O and you'll get CH2Cl here. So just by looking at the reactants that are given to you and remembering all the methods of preparation that we have done you would get your hint there itself 
Whenever you do NCRT questions, you know, they always take you a step ahead from the, uh, the theory part that you have done. So usually children get a little, you know, they feel a little intimidated by these questions. But frankly, if you've understood the theory part well, doing the questions is not as difficult. So really pay attention on the theory part, understand it well, and then when you apply your knowledge to these questions, I'm sure you will be able to solve them. So now let us quest come to question, or some, rather part four. In part four, again, you have a cyclohexene, hexene, because there's a double bond here, and a methyl group attached here, and you are making it react with HI. Now this is addition of two alkenes, right? It's cyclohexene. So whenever you have an addition of an acid to a double bond, the addition takes place, the hydrogen and the other second bond breaks. And this was what kind of reaction was this? This was electrophilic addition, if you remember. The, both the atoms across the uh, double bond, the second bond breaks, both of them get their electrons. The acid, the hydrogen and, and the iodine get their own electrons. And then they go and join across the two, um, across the two uh, carbon atoms across the double bond. Now, how does the addition take place? The addition takes place according to Markarnikov rule. And what is that rule? That the negative part of the addendum, that is iodine, is the negative part here and hydrogen is the positive part. The negative part of the addendum goes and joins that carbon which has lesser number of hydrogens in it. Now, if you look at these two carbons, this is CH2, 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 this is CH, and this is only C. Why? Because one carbon is attached to this carbon, this carbon, there are, there's a double bond here, and the fourth bond is with the carbon, so there are no hydrogens here. So obviously the iodine will come and attach itself to this carbon, right? According to Markonikov's rule, the addendum, the negative part of the addendum should come and attach itself to that carbon which has the lesser number of hydrogen atoms. So what would your main product be? Your product would be, the double bond is now gone. For this CH here, you will get a CH2 because all of these are CH2s already. And here you had CH3 already there and the hydrogen would come in, uh, sorry, the iodine will come and get attached here. And since this was CH, the hydrogen got attached here and you got a CH2. Next part, CH3, CH2, Br plus NaI. Now we know that iodide or iodine uh, can substitute the lower uh, halogens. Why? Because it is easier for iodine to substitute these and the bond formed with iodine would be stronger. So usually the sodium iodide or potassium iodide are used to replace or this is known as the halogen exchange method. So halogen can be exchanged. That is what has to be done here. You have CH3, CH2, Br and it reacts with NaI. Make the iodine interchange with bromine. So you'll get CH3, CH2, I plus NaBr would be your product. The last part here. You have cyclohexene again and you're reacting bromine and in the presence of heat and ultraviolet light. Again, whenever you have heat and ultraviolet light, this is a reaction that will take place for that carbon which is sp3 hybridized not the carbon which is sp2 hybridized which means the these two carbon atoms which have a double bond are uh, are sp2 hybridized and therefore the addition will not take place to this these two carbons the addition or the substitution rather one of the hydrogens will be substituted with bromine that will take place for another carbon maybe the adjacent one so we can write the product as we leave the benzene the in where it is that is the double bond where it is and we substitute the bromine here and this is again new uh, sorry free radical uh, substitution and hbr you get here so do you see so this was question 10.5 let me now write question 10.6 give me a moment all right so now this is question 10.6 
It says, arrange each set of compounds in the order of increasing boiling points. You have to arrange them according to their increasing boiling points. But before we come to solving this question, let us, let us just revise what decides the increasing boiling point. If the compounds, as the number of carbon atoms goes on increasing, the boiling point increases. So what? let us just write down the properties. One, number of carbon atoms. What does boiling point depend on? The number of carbon atoms. As the number of carbon atoms goes on increasing, the boiling point increases. The second is the uh, mass of the halogen, right? If there is, let us say, there is only one halogen atom and you have the, the alkyl group is the same, then the boiling point would depend on the mass of the halogen. We know iodines have the highest mass, so the iodide of the compound would be the would have the highest boiling point. Then would come bromide. Then would come uh, sorry chloride, and the least would be fluoride. Right. So as the mass of the uh, halogen increases, the boiling point also increases. So boiling point depends on the mass of the halogen. It depends on the number of carbon atoms if in the compound. So these are the factors that you have to keep in mind when you're deciding which one would have the higher boiling point or the lower boiling point. The third is the number of halogen atoms. Number of halogen atoms. Is it monohalo substituted? Is it dihalo substituted? Hydrogen has a mass of only one, but every time a hydrogen is substituted by a halogen, the mass of that compound increases. And if the mass of that compound increases, its boiling point also increases. So the number of halogen atoms, the number of carbon atoms, the mass of the halogen atom, and the fourth factor is when you have isomeric uh, compounds, then with branching, the boiling point decreases. So boiling point decreases with branching. More the branching, the more condensed the molecule is. The more condensed a molecule is, lower is its boiling point. So these are the factors that affect the boiling point. There is one factor that affects the melting point also. The, all of these affect the boiling point and melting point. But there is one factor that affects the melting point and that is in the case of uh, aromatic um, compounds. And that is where if you have an ortho, aromatic dihalo substituted compounds. If you have an ortho, a meta or a para, a para compound is more symmetrical, therefore it would form a better lattice. It would form a better packing in the lattice and therefore it would be more stable in the solid state. And the boiling point of a para, uh, the melting point of a, a para compound would be higher. But we are not talking of melting points in this question. We, we have to talk of uh, we have to think of the boiling point, therefore these are the four factors that we would be thinking of when we are going to answer this question. So let us first write down the structures of these molecules. That way it will become easier for us to start comparing the molecules. Bromomethane, CH3Br is bromomethane. Bromoform, CHBr3 is bromoform. Chloromethane, ch 3 Cl, right? Then dibromomethane, CH2Br2. What are we noticing here? What are the differences? All of them have the methyl group. None of the carbon atoms in all of them are the same. So car number of carbon atoms is the same. This is not the factor that we are considering. The second thing is that here we have bromine and in one compound we have chlorine. In all the other three we have bromines. So first let us talk of what is different between the halogens. Chlorine is lighter than bromine. Therefore, out of all these compounds, this is the one which would be the lightest. Right? The methyl group is the same in all of them. One carbon atom and this has been substituted with chlorine while the others have been substituted by bromine. So this is the one which, which would have the lowest boiling point since its mass is the least. So you have to arrange them in order of increasing boiling point. So let us write this first. CH3, Cl should have the least boiling point, right? Let us now move to the next one. So what is the next compound? 
Uh, now these three have all got bromines but this has got one bromine, this has got three, two bromines and this has got three bromines. What did it tell us? The number of halogen atoms. As the number of halogen atoms goes on increasing, if the alkyl group is the same, the boiling point will increase with increasing number of halogen atoms. So it is understood this monobromo product, dibromo would be the next and tribromo would be the last. So the next boiling point would be of CH3Br. The one higher would be with two bromine atoms. So it will be CH2Br2. And the highest boiling point would be of CHBr3, that is bromo 4. Interesting. Next part of the question. You have one chloropropane, isopropyl chloride, and one chlorobutane. Let's write the structures again. One chloropropane. Propane is one CH2Cl, CH2CH3. This is one chloropropane, isopropyl chloride, that is the branch is on the second carbon. So this is CH3, CH, CH3, Cl, right, isopropyl chloride. And one chlorobutane. So this is a straight chain compound. This seems to be having a branch. And one chlorobutane, one, oh, I'm writing the name. Butane would be CH2Cl, CH2, CH2, CH2. So what do we see here? Out of these three compounds, these two have the same number of carbon atoms, but this has a larger number of carbon atoms. This is obviously the larger molecule. The chain is the biggest. So this one would have the highest boiling point. Now, if we come to these two, out of these two, this is a straight chain compound and this has got a branch, right? So wherever there's a branch, that one is more condensed. It decreases, the boiling point decreases with branching. So this is the most condensed. So this is the least, this is the highest, this comes in the middle. So we write the least one is CH3, CH, Cl, CH3, the next one would be this is the least then greater than uh oh this is the has the least boiling point the one greater than this would be uh ch2 cl ch2 ch3 and the highest would be ch2 cl ch2 ch2 ch3 this should this is a terminal carbon atom it should be three right one chloropropane, isopropyl chloride, and one chlorobutane. So that does question 10.6. With this, I'll wrap up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.